come here. Come here, Papa. Come on, let's go. Oh, let's go, Papa. This is my boy, Tokyo, and I love him. Mm. My little papa. Mm. Don't put him down. He's just tolerating me. He's such a good boy. Oh, you stinky. Oh, you stinky. Stinky, no stinky, no pinky. Mm. What's up, guys? Kevin here. And this is the first coffee break. Woo! Woo! Can I get a woo from the crowd? Let's go! Let's go! So this is a new monthly series that I was thinking about uh, starting um, where essentially I make coffee and I talk about what was pretty cool this past month. So that can be, you know, not necessarily that I picked up, but cool things that got leaked, got released, um, like whether it be product, media, music, uh, like whatever. Um, and this is going to be covering this past March since now we're in April. Man, this year is going by fast. Um, so today the coffee that I will be doing in the pour over method is, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. It's in Ethiopia, um, made by The Barn. Blueberry, lemon meringue, and jasmine. I have about 20 grams that was ground up while the water is boiling. Let me go find my Chemex. This Chemex has been with me for so long. God bless this soul. I don't know how it survived, but yeah. Um, I just wanted to do this series just sort of as like a very chill, very relaxed video. Um, it's not gonna be too uh, edited or formatted or anything like that. Uh, not super serious. Also, if you hear pitter patters, that is my that is my son, Dopio. Uh, he is a I don't know what he is. He's like a mutt, but he's a they said Jack Russell Terrier. I've also seen uh, like miniature pincher. I've also seen a bunch of other dogs in him. He has one ear up to the sky and one ear down. Uh, so you know he's like he's chaotic neutral. Um, and I mean, like we've had him for a month and he's he's doing great. Oh, and also for pour overs, I just wanna mention, if you guys are new, always rinse out the paper filter. It gets rid of that like nasty taste. I'm doing a really shitty job because I have issues with caffeine. You guys should always have this long chopstick. I know it looks like fucking little dorky, but I always have like a chopstick in the Chemex just because I'm too cheap to buy Chemex filters because I think it's bullshit. Um, so I just use V60 filters and it's been doing great for years. Um, and also you always want to do, for pour overs, you want to do a 1 to 16, 1 to 17. That's typically what I do. Um, but also since I am a degenerate, I also put ice in my drinks. So don't take that much coffee advice from me. So let's go on with uh, some of the products that I've released, um, or I guess leaked or released, or just product stuff in general. Uh, the Easy 500 Tactical. Um, Ye was seen wearing this during the Black Lives Matter protests, and n yeah, like no one knew what it was. We couldn't get a clear picture of it. There was another picture that leaked um, a while ago where it was just on a table. I think it was in e a Yeezy dock made by Team Dash. Um, it was just in the background and an official like box was made, a label was made, everything was like made made. So there is a Yeezy 500 tactical that somehow got out into the wild and it was sold on eBay for like 350 for like a size 12. And I really like the Yeezy 500 sole with the boot upper and the upper looks very similar to the Yeezy season four boot upper. Um, and the Easy Season 5 boot upper, I really like that sort of look. So I just thought it would be a really interesting, it'd be really sick if it did get released. Also, 20 grams, I'm gonna be doing 320 ml of water.
I realize that this is not a coffee video, but you guys are gonna watch me make coffee. So yeah, uh, I really do hope that it releases. I really do like a lot of Yeezy products, although Ye himself is a little bit problematic. Um, I do think that his products are great, or at least the Yeezy team makes some really good products. And I really hope to see them out in the wild or maybe opportunity to buy them. Um, another release was the John Club C Olive. The John Club C Olive is the third iteration of the Club C. I think they had the gray, they had the beige, and then they have the olive. The olive is inspired by the military surplus store. I think it looks cool. Uh, if I've heard correctly, it's only available on Joan. Um, they have another Club C that's about to release. It's an all black with a nubuck upper and a leather liner. It accidentally dropped in some Denmark sites in Reebok, Denmark, I believe, or some Scandinavian country or European country. Um, and some people already got their pairs in. That is supposed to be releasing later this year, uh, but I believe the olive is only exclusive to Jam. Not much to say. Um, like I did like the pairs that I've had before, but I really don't think there's gonna be anything that can rival the Terrell Club C. I really think that that is like the most high quality Club C there is. And another big issue with Club C's is they don't really wear for a long time. I know a lot of people can wear Club C's and they're pretty comfortable, but like they don't last very long. You just want the gases to come out. Next one is the Y3 Itogo, 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 maybe. Um, I thought it was a really cool shoe. It was shown off by Concept Kicks. Uh, they're sort of like an online publication that shows off a lot of cool products. Um, the Itogo is a five piece construction. I believe it doesn't use any glue, if I remember correctly, and it's all stitched together. The boost is like fully removable. So I just thought in general, it's a very cool product. And the idea of it is, is like essentially trying to take the most iconic pieces of the Casa and just honing it down and kind of like minimizing the manufacturing process and all of that. And I thought it came out really, really nice. So um, eventually maybe I want to see it in person. I don't know if I personally would want to wear it, but I do think it's one of those like really cool, like innovative uh, products and sort of like the hero product. Uh, the Haven Zephyr jacket. I just think it was a really cool jacket. Like Haven, I feel like they always make really, really cool technical jackets. Just for some reason, I have a hard time putting down that much money for a, a brand or a store that I don't really personally have any sort of connection to. Cool jacket. Um, I really like the looks of it. Um, maybe if it hits sale, maybe I grab it, but I would rather get like, I don't know, like an acronym jacket or something like that at that price point, like secondhand especially, or on like grailed or on like reversible or even on sale. A lot of the times um, I was able to get the acronym B91 for less than, for around half retail. So I'm just saying there's a lot of options out there now. Golden Zero, Spring Summer 23. I thought it was a really cool thing. I picked up the Goldwyn Alpine Codex uh, jacket. It was the giant blue one, the Gore-Tex one. The shell is really, really nice itself. Goldwyn Zero is essentially a revamp and like all made in Japan version. And I think that they knocked it out of the park in terms of styling. I personally don't really want to pay those prices. Um, it's a cool collection. Not really, like, I don't really want to fork out that much for a shell or a vest or some shorts or anything like that. So maybe in the future, but I thought the denim looked really, really nice. I thought a lot of the shells in the bed, in the vest, especially, I wish the vest and the shell was like one jacket, just cause I thought the way they styled it looked really, really, really nice. Um, but alas, really expensive, uh, but it is all made in Japan. So like Goldwyn is a really, really, cool outdoors company that's like off the beaten path, not like Arteryx, not too technical. Like, um, you know, it kind of reminds me of like an Anne Wander type of vibe. Ramalzi Supreme Dunk High and Low. Ramalzi, I'm terrible at pronunciation. The high and the low, 
Both of those dunks look great. I like both of them. When they release, like whenever they release, I will be trying to get them. I think they are really, really cool. I like the color locking of the high better than the low, but I just don't like the shape of the high. Um, but I guess we'll see. The low is really nice as well, but I really like the high. Uh, like Ramalzi has done a bunch of artwork for the Supreme stores and they've just been a long time collaborator. So this collab makes sense. And I, and I think the lace lock looks really cool as well, or the Dubray. Next up is the Howl Studios 1130 part two. The 1130 part two is um, a shoe that I pre-ordered for six or seven, eight months, I think. Um, they dropped the pre-order, I think like a month after the part one released, which I'll bring over here. This is the part one. Very, very nice, very cool shoe. I did a review on it. Um, oh shit, I got coffee on it. Um, very nice shoe. The part two is a darker, greener color with some earth tones, the brown leather. Uh, it should be coming in mid next week, finally. Um, but I'm very, very much looking forward to it. Global release is happening in a week. Uh, you know, uh, like log into Instagram and follow like Health Studios. They have a pretty decent system. I believe they're gonna be doing something for the part three, which is the all white with the red laces. That's gonna be coming out soon. So I'm really looking forward to that as well. Speaking of Health Studios, um, they made a superstar and I really, really liked it. Um, the Superstar was entered into the Consortium, I think, Challenge or something, the Consortium Cup, some competition that Adidas held. And unfortunately, the HAL Superstar did not make the cut, which I think is kind of ridiculous because I feel like if you just chose the Samba model, like, like people just would have like eaten it up. Like there were some Sambas there where I'm like, okay, it looks like like every single other Samba that's on the market. Like why would you vote for that versus like a really, really cool like superstar. Uh, the Hal Superstar I thought looked phenomenal. Unfortunately, I don't know if it'll be made uh, just because it lost and the goal was to have all of these stores compete with each other um, to get a chance to have their stuff produced. Oh. Next up, acronym, uh, Spring Summer 23 Drop 1. I love the J68, I've been waiting for that for a long time. I really like the J68 Cortex. Um, I've been debating on getting the Cortex versus the, the Prima Loft and then the Windstopper version. There's so many different versions. The Gore-Tex has a nice, nice like zipper that like makes it look like more biker-esque. Um, so I'm leaning a little bit more towards that, but it is expensive and I'm hoping that eventually it'll hit on sale, massive sale. So like fingers crossed. Also the P23Q, I actually like the P23Q in terms of pockets more than the A. The A, I just feel like the pockets look cool, but they're not like functional to me at all. I would rather have a P23 with like a P30 pocket um, even the Q pocket, I think looks cool. It looks okay, but like, I just want that functionality. So those are really the two pieces that I cared about. Next up is the latest Supreme Undercover uh, collaboration. I picked up four things. I picked up the puffer trench coat. So I'll be doing another like pickups video, but I really liked the puffer trench coat. I thought it was like the best deal because this is the puffer it like zips into the trench coat. I do wish that the trench coat just kind of had another detail. They've done a few other trench coats or chore coats before where they had some sort of like print or some sort of a patch there, but it's pretty simple, pretty nice. I thought this was the best. I got the Lupin T. I I got the, I forgot what painting it was, but I'll put it up here. I got that T and then I got the paint splatter T. So I got, the three T's in black, and then I got this jacket. I really wanted to like the BDU uh, jacket as well as the pants, but to be honest, one, the price, it was like five, 600 bucks. Uh, and then two, the beading, I think made it more expensive and made me like it less. Um, I think those ones actually didn't sell out. They just removed it from the website. So I'm curious to see if it'll hit sale. Uh, I was also debating on getting the zip up Zip up looked really cool. That also didn't sell out. Again, 
hopefully it hits sale. And another leak that happened was the Yeezy Quantum samples. This one was from a few years back, but I just wanted to bring it up. I love the Quantum samples um, or the Yeezy basketball samples. Cause it, even before it was called Quantum, it was the Yeezy basketball. So I just thought it was like such a cool model and he wore a few prototypes. And I really think that there's so much potential in like a higher top Yeezy that isn't the Yeezy Quantum. Although I like it, I just feel like the actual manufactured product sucks compared to some of the samples that we've seen way back. Next up is the Woodwood Solomon XT Slate. I really like the XT Slate. I thought it was a cool model um, and I liked it. I mean, I have nothing else to say. I think Solomon is having a really great year um, and I'm sure they'll keep it up. Clark's Kit Samba. There isn't really much else to say. I didn't pick it up, but I also think it's an amazing shoe. I think that this triple collaboration really does, I mean, it doesn't need Kit's name, but the only reason that this product even came to be was because of Ronnie Feig. So I give him the credit. He knows how to connect people. I thought it was a great shoe. Done. What do you guys think about Coffee Break? Do you guys like it? Do you guys hate it? Is there anything that you guys were really interested in that I didn't talk about that came out or that was kind of going around in the month of March? Uh, like, let me know in the comments. I'll try and reply to them. Uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, and I will catch you guys the next video. Peace.